Bob Simpson. Uh, and what year didn't he? He had two goes, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Because they called him back when there was, there was a bit of problem with... Um, World Series cricket. World Series cricket, yeah. He was 40-something then and yeah. went out and scored and batted. But he did fantastic. I remember. Oh, he's a tough old man, Bobby Simpson. Really. Yeah, because I didn't like World Series cricket. Really I lo- hard bloke, yeah. Bob Simpson. You ready? Yep. What year? What year do you think that was? Close to what, how old these cards are. I'm going to take a punt and say something like 65. 63. There you go. There you go. And mate. Bob Simpson was the Australian coach when you were in the West Indies, wasn't he? I think he was the coach for all of my international career except the first two tests in 81, where Peter Philpot was the coach on that Ashes tour. So, yes, all of my cricket, the rest of it, the 30. Eight one-day games and ten test matches, two tours, uh, Sri Lanka and the West Indies were all under Bobby Simpson. And would you say that he helped improve your cricket as a coach or or you or, or no difference to you? Or Oh, no, no, no. He was very, very hard and focused a lot on discipline. And if you didn't have that and if you didn't... Um, work within the parameters that he wanted, you were out the side in the blink of an eye, and everybody knew that. So it's my way or the highway was the, the method sort of... Yeah, but in, in in saying that, when he took the team over in 85, there wasn't a lot of discipline around the team then, and it needed whipping into shape, and he then brought brought younger players in like Jeff Marsh, Booney, Dean Jones, all these guys, Craig McDermott, with AB... And they then went under the, the Simo regime and understood what he required, what your output had to be, you know, what parameters. If you want to stay in the side, this is it. And from then, we started to win. I suppose it says a lot, doesn't it? Because the players you just mentioned are some of the, the all-time greats of Australian cricket. So. Yeah, yeah. He... he um, look, I talked a bit about bowling with him, mainly field setting and stuff like that. I always thought that People who weren't fast bowlers found it hard to understand what a fast bowler went through. Bobby bowled leg spin, but he knew about the game, so I would have never criticised him, but I talked to different people about the bowling and a lot amongst ourselves. But the fielding, oh, man, he was just dynamite in the field and really worked you over. He definitely made me a better cricketer, definitely. But he was very hard and ran a really tight ship. And sometimes people used to say, On guard. We're 30-year-old adults. Like, we're getting treated like under 18-year-olds. But that was Bob's way, and, and I suppose it was how he whipped everybody into into what we were. Sounds like a similar time when Justin Langer came in as the coach and had to sort of whip things into shape after South Africa. So it's a similar kind of thing, I suppose. I reckon Justin Langer would have been 25% of Bob Simpson. So I don't oh, know wow. what the fuck these modern blokes <laughs> were talking about. So if they thought, mate, get, don't, get, don't get me wrong, JL, focused, hard. He was a tough cricketer. I played against him. Black belt. Black belt, Zendo Kai, fucking black belt karate or something as well. Very, very focused. Lives his life like that focused but no way would he have been as hard as Bobby Simpson just an old school old wow. school old school mate the fielding some days was brutal and he worked you over until you collapsed on the ground you couldn't breathe and then he'd say get up and catch another 10 high ones I mean if you couldn't wear that you, you're gone mate they're, they're not, not the bloke I didn't he we knew he didn't want that sort of guy. In there. He wanted someone who'd drag themselves off the ground again, catch another three, fall down, vomit, get up again, because he knew you needed that in the game. Mate, in four hot days under that sun. In the West right? Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Well, no, that fifth day, oh, you've yeah. got to be on top of it, don't you? Like, you know, that's what, you know. I don't think people understand about sports that are in long form, and the only thing I can think that plays a number of days in a row are long-form tennis tournaments and golf tournaments that go for four days. And you know in these tennis tournaments and the long-form golf tournaments, the four-day... Mate, it's the last day. All the other days are in preparation to put yourself in a spot where you can fucking win it. Yep. 
long, long term uh, surfing contest that might go over a whole week. I watch all the surfing, one of, one of my great loves, and I watch the competitors. They go into the third round and the fourth round and then the, the love quarters. It. And by the way, they're talking, their body language. And I'm going, oh, are you up for this, bro? Or oh, that might have just dented you because you just got up on the bell. And when you're playing over days, oh, that last day, bro, that's what I said. That fifth day, your body's body. hurting, and, oh. and you're probably thinking, "I'm glad Bob Simpson had me out there catching those." You know what I mean? When I couldn't even breathe. I was pretty lucky, Ray. You you know this because yeah. you're one of my mates. I was a really hard trainer, yeah. and and made sure I was prepared. But I got to say, when I got back into the team in '87, and I went down to Melbourne to play in the Boxing Day Test, where I blocked out Sir Richard Hadley. Love it. I hadn't done a lot. With Simo for a couple of years, he coached us like eighty three, four, five, but then left to coach the Australian side. So we had other coaches at New South Wales, and as soon as Bob left, it was a little bit easier. And then I got back in the side eighty seven and thought, "Oh, that's right, Jesus, my hands are sore from catching," and you know, wow. and he wanted to make sure that you were not only up for it, but that vital catch out on the boundary that I had to run 30 metres as fast as I could to get, that's what he was coaching you for. That's going to change the game. And if you're not fit enough, focused enough, and able to do this, you're going to drop the ball and that fucker's going to get 200. 